So you guys will hopefully like this video. Bear with it. It's 30 minutes long. Near the end, you're going to love it. It's got Linda Fig making her statements. And with that said, let me start this video off with the uh, my sum quick, fast summation. Is that this was inspired by origami, this design. Um, very importantly, the height was established by a street. Uh, the numbers on the street that this bridge happened to be located at, 109th Street. What if this bridge was located at 25th Street? Well, this would be 25 feet tall. If it was at 180th Street, this would be 180th Street. Her inspiration comes from not structural, but from what's around her. Clearly, this is a negative way to go about building structures. I get inspiration by how many cracks in a sidewalk. So, we're going to put crack those many cracks in the sidewalk or in the structure. It's just... Oh, sorry guys, that just triggers me. So this is 109 feet tall because of a street next to it. Not because of anything that these loads, uh, the spans and the loads on this were calculated, this would be the best height. No, it's a, it's a, a street number, 109. So you then have to calculate, because it's 109 feet, force this to work, and the size of the tube would be 16 inches, right? But all of them are 16 inches, that none of them have gotten smaller in scale, even though they're closer. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just an odd, it's just terrible engineering. So we looked at these shapes and I looked at them too, right? And we looked at them and you look at them, the counter of this one, they're not even consistent, you know, going up and down. And they have these odd shapes, all of them because they were inspired by the height first off, 109 feet and you want these to tie in. See the direction of them? You would, uh, this is what the inspiration ties in as. And now the design of all of this is origami. She said origami gives her her motivation. And, and someone did talk to me about that ahead of time. And I said, I wish I could find that video. And he just said that, uh, that he ran across it. Nevertheless, he couldn't find it again. But here it is. Origami. Oh, it's, just, it's just craziness. Is that my man P2015 that, uh, that uh, I owe that credit to about the origami statement? So this is just amazing. So this was origami. The slenderness was there wanting to break world records um, for no reason at all. The moving the, the, uh, this as a cable state bridge, meaning making it structural, is just ridiculous. I think it's because they want to show that this ultimately, you don't need this. This is just decorative that we're now going to be able to get rid of cable state bridges. Uh, Post-tensioning to me inside a structure where you can't, um, it's just, it's, it failed, right? This is the biggest failure there is in bridge building as of current day. This makes the biggest failure. Two-day bridge, now with, with the major school, the major engineering school of the world, as you'll see, they brag about. You know, you can't get a bigger failure than this. Them making public statements about how badass they are and great they are. And then it turns out they're the worst failure in the damn history of uh, the world as of today. So let's talk about FIU and too big to fail. You know, that's a quote, you know, from too big to fail with banks. Well, the same thing with FIU. They represented all the bridges and structural engineering, pretty much starting around the world. It's huge, right? It's a, it's a big thing. And you just can't, don't want to lose that proposition. You know, that, that's, that you just don't want to lose that status. So you can't report back, and I'll show you in the documents, you can't report back that you've got a cracking structure, that your structure looks like it should be condemned, that you should just start over because that's now going to show that, wow, you guys are want to tell everyone else how to build bridges and you can't even build your simple crosswalk. This will be the, make them the laughing stock. So they had to continue on, yet they could have kept this under, so here's the ego, they could have kept this under wraps. And secret. No one, none of us would have known about this having being an issue. They could have just washed it under the carpet and, and, and called it a day. But their egos had to keep going forward, I believe. You know, their, all the engineers had to keep going forward. This will work. This will work. And, and it's just arrogance. It's arrogance and it's not engineering. So um, i got to be careful when I say something like it's not engineering. It was engineering and it was arrogance. And it's just terrible. Now, I'm going to have some clips in this video that show this guy here, and you guy recognize him, Linda Fig, and a few other people. And it's going to be basically the narrative. The narrative is, um, is that they're too big to fail. And you'll see that this is re these are rehearsed because they're going to do retakes. It's uh, nothing 
Um, they knew the questions ahead of time. They had the answers, and you see them do the retakes. It's awesome that they shared this. Obviously, it was their data, um, or someone leaked it out. But I also thank someone for sending me this well, link. Just about the bridge, how it's self-cleaning, um, things like that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And the meeting space. So you'll ask one. the question, then I'll respond. Sure. Yeah, don't don't mind the camera, just talk right. To Look right at me. Okay. Um, so start by telling me about the process to get here and about the tiger. Well, this was actually the third application that FIU submitted under the Tiger Grant uh, uh, proposal. So the third time was a charm, and we were awarded the project in uh, middle of 2013. And at that time, we really had no idea uh, the amount of complexity involved in federal Tiger dollars. So we made a trip to Tallahassee, we went with federal highway people up there, we worked with local FDOT uh, individuals here, right here in District 6, and we developed a plan to move forward. So this has been a process of four and a half years to get us to this point. Uh, we did the groundbreaking about two years ago. Uh, that was really the symbolic start of this particular project. It is a major uh, project because it's more than just a bridge, it's a gathering place. It's a connection between two great communities, FIU and the city of Sweetwater, and we call it University City. And nothing but a spectacular gathering place for students, faculty, staff, and residents uh, would do. So this bridge in itself, this span is 175 feet long, 32 feet wide. There will be another 100-foot connector that goes across the canal to a landing on the uh, city of Sweetwater side. And we're gonna have beautiful plazas on both ends and sidewalks and pathways and walkways all the way through uh, the, the center of campus to the Green Library, up to City Hall in the city of Sweetwater. I think that you're blocking the camera. <laughs> you jumped right in front of it. Hey, you want to get the bridge in the backdrop? You want? Let me know what you want to do because. Got it. The the bridge is going to solidify a partnership with with F, between FIU and the city of Sweetwater that began a couple of years ago, eight years ago to be exact, when we first applied for a Tiger grant to be able to do this pedestrian bridge project. It, unfortunately, we were not able to get that bridge that grant up, uh, accepted eight years ago. When we did it. We subsequently applied for it two years later, and then one year again. We we're finally the third time around was the lucky time, lucky number three, where we were awarded the grant project. This was always the beginning of a visionary project to be able to have a pedestrian bridge to communicate between the. FIU campus and the city of Sweetwater always envisioning the fact that eventually residential towers would come to the city. As such, you see one right behind us here at 109 Tower in the corner of 109 and 7 Terrace, where that was the first one that was developed four years ago. Well, FIU and, and the city of Sweetwater have had a very symbiotic relationship in the fact that, what I've always said, FIU should actually develop as much classrooms and parking for the students to be able to educate people. They should not be in the business of residential housing. That comes into the combination where we can accommodate the housing. And developers have taken a niche to that where they've been buying up some property around the city and turning it into residential housing for the students. So it works out for us where the residents are moving to the city and you and the university can in turn concentrate on building more classrooms. I missed everything you said. Do you think this will boost your local economy? Absolutely. You already have two residential towers that, or one, the one here right behind us is producing approximately $300,000 in out-of-loan taxes. The two that are slated right behind the bridge that have actual connectivity to the bridge, those are slated to actually bring an out-of-loan dollars to the city close to a million dollars. You know, whereas we've got a city that has a $20 million annual budget, to have an additional million dollars in just two buildings alone is a huge impact. Do you have anything else you want to say about today? Uh, no, I think everybody else has been covering it. But it's great Thank you so much, sir. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Sorry, Carl, I don't Thank think we, we need anybody else. In the of but let me go before you. Just further links FIU and Sweetwater. Uh, our, our philosophy is to build bridges into communities, uh, into neighborhoods and we're passionate about student safety. So it makes sense for us to find a way to ensure that the 4,000 FIU-related students, faculty, and professional staff 
have a safe way to get to campus every day. Those 4,000 individuals who live in Sweetwater. Uh, second of all, we want Sweetwater to be a part of FIU. We're neighbors, we're friends. There's so many people in Sweetwater who could uh, benefit from all the great things that are happening in our FIU. So this bridge is a very strong message about our desire for collaboration. Not just with Sweetwater, but with other communities uh, here in greater Miami. So I'm really proud of the efforts that our entire team made to get the funding in Washington and to bring this funding back to work collaboratively with the leadership of Sweetwater to find a win-win construction that was going to bring us together. It's a very, very exciting day. What are some of the things that FIU has to offer Sweetwater, like the Frost Art Museum and other sports games? Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, access to one of the world's greatest libraries here. Uh, that would be the first thing. Uh, second of all, uh, incredible athletic events that are, uh, that are open to our community. Uh, thirdly, you have the art museum, which is unbelievable. You have incredible food venues, which are uh, first rate. So this university is, can be the world for the, for the community of Sweetwater in terms of experiencing uh, a, a, a very high quality environment and a place where you can live, you can study, you can learn, uh, you can have fun. That's our FIU. Does he need to say that again? Yeah, probably. What do you... I guess it's up to you. I don't mind because it looks like a construction site. It does. Okay. I agree. It so fits. we're, we can't really. Okay. Okay. I'm good. But right. if you want to, I'm here. Well, let's do it again and see you guys. Okay. Yeah, because you don't know what that, that's picked up. Okay. Okay. Uh, FIU is about bridge building. You can't get clearer than that statement he just said. FIU is about bridge building. Again, that's the proof that shows it. Too big to fail. You can't mess up your reputation. You've got to perform. FIU works very closely in a lot of our communities and we have to work closely with our neighbors in particular. So this bridge is a way to connect Sweetwater with FIU. 4,000 FIU-related people live in Sweetwater, students, professional staff, faculty, and we want them to get here every day safely. And so this bridge provides that safe passage to FIU and back to Sweetwater. And it's a statement about our commitment to our community. It's a statement about our commitment to West Dade. It's a commitment to state that, yes, FIU is about the community. And so the opportunity for residents of Sweetwater to come into the university, to use the library, to use the facilities, to go to the Frost Art Museum, to go to athletic events. We want to bring Sweetwater into FIU. And likewise, we're very comfortable with FIU uh, being in Sweetwater. And fortunately, we have a great leadership in Sweetwater that understands the importance of working together. Fortunately, we got great support out of Washington, particularly our congressional delegation, Mario diaz Balart, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, so that we could bring this funding to allow this great construction company, MCM, to build this bridge and to put it in place. And here we are today celebrating the first phase of getting this bridge open. That was Thank you. Okay, good. My Francisco Chiri. Francisco F R A N C S N C I S C O Chiri C H I W T Y. So tell me what interested you in coming out for this morning? Well, we were invited by the chair of our department, Dr. Azizi Namini. He's in. So I've researched this guy. He's a civil engineering, it appears, and he's doing their structural program also for this bridges and a lot of evaluations and steel and concrete mixed together. Um, I couldn't find much on uh, post-tensioning, <laughs> ironically, in, in a quick view that I looked at. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, of course, but I wanted to give you guys a quick shout out to his profile. Again, this, this shows that this was project was too big to fail. If it failed, FIU failed. 
So you just can't have the failure. Evolving this new technology, building bridges, is called ABC, Accelerated Bridge Construction. So we can see with the least traffic interruption possible, we can have a bridge uh, set in position. Uh, we were doing uh, a lot of investigations and a, a lot of projects. I'm personally uh, working with a pro with a NFDOT project, and they want to ensure uh, construction of bridges the 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 quickest possible, the, with the least traffic interruption and the the service life the, the longest. So this is a good example of that of that work what we're doing. We can see the bridge is being placed in just one weekend. So this 10 years ago will we'll spend like one or two months to, to, to build and with a lot of traffic detours and, and those kind of stuff. Okay, so for your next answer, I'm going to have you say, you know, I came out here at 5 o'clock this morning to watch this. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I came here since uh, 5 o'clock in the morning when the crew started to move the bridge and we pretty much filmed the whole process because we want to see all the details the crew is paying attention to this uh, bridge uh, placement. So it's, it's not only just uh, bring the bridge uh, to position, they have to monitor sensors, they have to see if the bridge is, is behaving good against all the loads it's receiving. Do you want to say anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Cool. That's you. it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Diwan Hossain, D-E-W-A-N-H-O-S-S-A-I-N Hossain. I'm a grad student at FIU and working with the uh, ABC Technology and Sensor Project uh, uh, in, in my PhD program. What got you interested in studying something like this? Yeah, I mean, I, I like bridges, you know, like Florida, they have most movable bridges in the, in the, in the states and uh, there are plenty of bridges and bridges are really important for transportation infrastructure. So for my future and career, I believe like Florida is leading the, the, in, the, in, the, in this field. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen today, what time you came out. I would say this is, this is a magic bridge because I came at 5 and it's almost getting 10 and the bridge will be open soon. So people will be amazed seeing like, okay, it's in, in 5 hours using that ABC technology and sensors, the bridge is going to there. So it's, it's something amazing, you know. So I, I mean, I would, I would say it's a magic bridge. I mean, the, in the classroom, uh, we, we learn pretty much about the design, the construction part, how, how the safety, that's a big issue. And here we are actually seeing this happening. So that's kind of, we don't see. So we, we, we kind of imagine, okay, this is going to be happen. But this is something that really establishes us to, to view what we have learned. So this is like, I would say, the real practical application of what we learn in the classroom. So I would urge uh, most students to come and see this kind of practical projects to gain their knowledge and enhance what they learn in the classroom. Um, and is this something that you really want to do? Yes, I love it. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, FIU is, it will be, I think uh, people and the students who will be graduating and working with FIU, they will have a very good future. And if you work hard, FIU will, will uh, definitely go ahead in, in next few years. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice. Have you start by introducing yourself and okay. saying, you know, your, what your position is on campus. All right. <clears throat> so go ahead and do that. So my name is Leo Cosio. That's L-E-O-C-O-S-I-O, -O -O, and I'm the uh, president of student government at the Biscayne Bay campus. But I'm happy to be here at MMC today for a really, I think, historic uh, event here, putting this bridge in, which is going to be uh, really great for our students. Talk about it in terms of safety. And um, I think the partnership that we have with the city of Sweetwater is, is really important for many reasons. Um, you know, one, because we have about 4,000 students living in the city of Sweetwater and, you know, they commute to campus, they, they walk to campus every day, they have to cross 8th Street. Um, that's a really dangerous situation and we, we don't want to put our students in, in that kind of dangerous situation. So um, this is a really innovative way to, to help them, um, you know, every morning and afternoon when they have to come to class. So I think it's going to be a, a great, safe way to get to campus now.
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Do you want to say anything else? Are you inspired by what you well, you're going to see his name pop up in a second again with this interview and how it's stating that he uh, programmed, that he put into place, etc. So you, this is again showing that FIU just can't fail with this bridge. You know, you can't have a f bridge fail. Um, I, I think this is our one of our preeminent programs, you know, put into place here with uh, Dr. Azizi Namini from the... Um, College of Engineering. This is an amazing marvel to see, and we're, we've, we've blocked off a major, <laughs> major street here in the city in Miami. So it, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to be here on Eighth Street. So that's it. Yeah. thank you. And here comes a slap in the face. This is Linda Fig, with the uh, stating how MCM, our partners, does such great craftsmanship, and etc. Clearly, as I told you guys, that you know she could not have known that this was, didn't have one error after another, one problem after another with BPA and also with the uh, cracks in the structure. But this is her company that designed this along with, MC, along with uh, FIU. They did the engineering, the structural engineering of this. Of course, we believe FIU participated in the uh, design and also you would think they would have done the evaluation of the structural uh, members and its in, interactions uh, also. I mean, just why wouldn't they, right? It just it doesn't make sense that a school would ignore it. And it's a great opportunity. I'm going to have you talk about um, undertaking this project in your company and seeing it come to fruition. So the great inspiration for this bridge came from FIU and the city of Sweetwater's desire for a signature pedestrian bridge that would really be a symbol for all the things that FIU and the city of Sweetwater represent. So you know FIU is the epicenter really in the world for accelerated bridge construction. And that says it all, that they're epicenter for the world as she said, you cannot have them fail or they lose their status. And therein lies the major conflict of interest. It's just amazing. And they had a report um, to the federal government if there were problems. And I'm dying to know if those reports said that they had cracking in the structures, et cetera, as the documentation shows in a limited form. Every two years, people come from all over the world to learn and celebrate and advance the state of the art of building bridges quickly. And so today is the perfect example of a one-of-a-kind historic moment in which 950 tons of bridge, 175 feet long, is spun into place in just a few hours. It is making bridge history throughout the world right here at FIU. It is so exciting because not only has it been done quickly, but with the greatest technology. The concrete is made out of a nanotechnology. And what happens is when UV light from the sun hits the surface of the concrete, it creates a photocatalytic reaction that cleans pollution from the air and is self-cleaning. This will be an extraordinary pathway for students and people who live in the city of Sweetwater and visitors to come and enjoy a space that is over 10,000 square feet, a place where you can stop and gather with friends and sit at tables between the struts, where you can uh, enjoy a beautiful stroll and hang out on the bridge. Uh, it is going to be a connection for prosperity for the future. So everyone on the Fig Bridge team is so excited to have designed this signature bridge for FIU and the city of Sweetwater. And we are so proud of our partnership with MCM. MCM has done an extraordinary job in building this. Their quality, their safety, their beauty and their formwork and finish. They I'm joking of course, but if you see the images. As we know, she obviously is not getting the memo or she's living in a shell and ignoring all the memos because, you know, it's clearly documented that they do not have the ability to, to perform smoothly. She even calls them the best. Really? They are the best. They are just incredible. 
and a fantastic company. So uh, it is just a, a great honor to have an opportunity to work with them. So we wanted to make a bridge that would be one of a kind in all the world. Well, they did make a bridge of one of a kind in all the world. That it was failed at conception, it was failed in, in construction methods, it was failed in installation, it was, it's failed in so many public comments about how great it was, it's failed in so many public comments about how great the school came. This bridge is one of a kind in the entire world one of a kind and failure. But what we can learn from it is the what not to do. All the structural issues never to cross again, never to disrespect some standards in the world that just been working for years and years, for a hundred plus years, to just have some good old fashioned engineering, some redundancy, and leave the aesthetics as primary out of it. Primary should be the structural integrity of the structure, um, you shouldn't think of, uh, I think they were thinking of, hey, redundancy is stupid. You know, you know the, uh, I think ultimately they're thinking, we can get rid of uh, cable stay bridges. We're going to be awesome. Pretty soon we better just lift these bridges up in cranes and no more cable stays. And it just all be concrete and post-tensioning. This shows that post-tensioning is a failure to the world. It really is. It's just going to have one failure after another. That's how much I think of post-tensioning and, and bridges. Yes, you know, they, they do a lot of amazing things, the post-tensioning does, but it's, the maintenance is just too risky, it's too deadly. It could become an iconic symbol for FIU in the city of Sweetwater. So it has a tower that's 109 feet tall, right next to 109th Avenue. Do you understand that the height, what she just said was that the height was determined because it made sense because the streets were as was 109 9th street so let's incorporate that into our structural design of the bridge and yes it will be structural because it's low bearing it can kill people it's part of the fake cable stays that are help with stability of this bridge it's just amazing how she made the terminations her company made the terminations on a structural element what else did they make the terminations based on you know the height because it equal to a fish no, she says origami. Um, it's just craziness. Now, I had someone contact me, and they said that the origami thing to me. And uh, there's the origami statement in, in this also, that the bridge layout was origami? Really? Uh, with cables that come into a canopy that is both structural and provides shade for those who walk across the bridge. So the inspiration was from, you know, the various different aspects that make um, FIU and the city of Sweetwater great. We, we noticed that in uh, some of the satellite work and weather work that FIU was doing, that they had this sort of origami feel to the satellites. So you see the struts on this bridge feel a little bit origami. Uh, there are... Um, special ways in, way in which we made the bridge a little bit lower by having very slender shapes. So we used the technology of our time to create uh, the most innovative solutions. So I want to talk about what she just said. There is no technology for this design. There it doesn't exist. It didn't work. This was a one-off bridge. And with that said, I want to add this drama to you guys. That engineers use extrapolation. So we have the, 30, the United Emirates study. They used, they wanted to make a 160 foot truss. They used a 30 foot model. And then they used extrapolation from there to make the 160 foot model saying this should perform in this manner. That could also be beautiful. And with LED lighting uh, on the white surface at night, the bridge will come to life with extraordinary color. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you was so much. Was that okay? You're good at this. You're okay. You're, you're very good <laughs> yeah, at this. You are. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to have you guys start by saying and spelling your first and last names, please. Oh, and I'll hold it. Okay, you hold it. Leonor Flores, L-E-O-N-O-R-F-L-O-R-E-S. Michelle Flores, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-F-L-O-R-E-S. Okay, so tell me why you guys came out here today. 
The reason we came out here is because I work with MCM and as a FIU alumni, uh, being able to be part of this Prosperity Bridge is amazing. Um, I'm here because not only is my mom work here, uh, well, because I'm interested in the architecture and the design of the bridge and the, the math portion of it. Is that something you're interested in school? Yes. Yes, I'm interested in math and science in school. We actually woke up really early today and got here around 5 o'clock in the morning, Michelle. Yes. And um, we wanted to be able to see how the bridge, w bridge was being transferred from where it was built to its final location here on 8th Street. Yes. Uh, why did you come out here? Oh, why? It's, yeah, it's kind of cool the way all the math adds up to create the bridge in the placement that was designed. Do you think you maybe want to go to FIU too? Maybe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think I might have a chance to come here at FIU. At FIU? At, at FIU. <laughs> the FIU family? Yes, we are. Um, my husband, Henry, graduated from FIU as well. Um, he did uh, information technology. I did construction management. And it's very important for me as a woman and an engineer to be able to promote that to my daughter, Michelle, um, because I think um, it's women have a different perspective, we're able to put in an artistic touch and be able to build. Yes. Cool to see your mom do stuff like this? Yeah, it's really cool to see her and her company like achieve such great things. Awesome, I love it. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. You guys have done this before. Again, FIU is about bridge building and they were too big to fail. If this failed, they would make them look like they're a failure. Reality, people lost their lives because they didn't stick to good engineering practices.